Shalom Makim. This is Brother Zion from the Great Muslim Playing Tables Camp, located here in Philadelphia. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shema Shai, by Shimra Kakwadash. I want to give double honors to the Apostle and the Elders of the Great Millstone. I want to give a hearty shalom to all your sincere Akim out there, pushing the word in all truth and sincerity. And any Akwat that are out there listening. Um, as you can see from already what you see up on the screen, this is going to be a quick lesson uh, to the point. A lot of elders and apostles and brothers already made you know, videos on this. I just kind of want to put, touch, uh, put my two cents into it, uh, but I just want to kind of focus more so on this comment that I had seen while the stream was going on um, the other day, uh, where this guy said, I know GMS is laughing so hard, and, you know, he's right, we are laughing hard, but more importantly, the Most High is laughing, right? The Most High is laughing because this is his judgment that he's executing on this man. We're laughing because... We understand that the Lord's judgment is being brought forth. And it's great, it's a great thing. Like, yeah, we're laughing. Yeah, we're rejoicing. Because it's about time that all these people that want to, you know, mock and, you know, talk shit about the prophets and, you know, offend the most high's little ones and all that is bringing brought bringing brought uh suck is bringing brought forth through judgment. And this is a hellish judgment, man. You know, we're already saying like this dude probably won't see it. You know, till the missiles, you won't see it till the missiles come. Because either, you know, realistically, the missiles are going to get him or um, he's going to die in jail. All right. So he won't basically he won't see it past his um, his sentencing. Right. Because either the missiles are going to come or he's going to die within the jail cell. Right. Is what I meant to say. You know, he ain't going to see it past his sentencing. So like, yeah, we're laughing. We're, we're rejoicing. But you need to understand that this is the Most High whose judgment is being brought forth. And you should fear the Most High's judgment. This ain't something, you know, GMS is doing and, you know, we're, we're taking, we're, we're boasting on, 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 on anything. This, this has nothing to do with, with us. This has everything to do with the Lord, Yahweh Shema Shai. And you need to understand that the Lord is not playing. All right, the Most High Yahweh is not playing. He's bringing and sending forth his angels and his son, Yahweh Shai, to set forth judgment. So it's not a time to play. It's not a time to mock, all right, whether it be the Most High, His Son, the angels, the prophets. It's not a time to mock the scriptures. It's not a time for that, all right, because you're going to get caught up in the Lord's uh, uh, um, judgment. And it's going to be fierce. It's going to be harsh, okay? You ain't going to, uh, uh, you know, Live in all this pleasure and all this wickedness. All right, the Lord is going to bring a quick, really uh, a quick, swift end to it. All right. So, to that laughing hard, right, and, and, and more importantly, who the real person who's laughing, and we take um, joint joy in, right? We're taking a joint joy in this. Uh, is the Most High in His laughter? Um, is Proverbs uh, the first chapter? And my first uh, scripture is the uh, first verse is the 22nd verse, right? This is uh, Proverbs 1 and 22. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and you refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded but ye have set at not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. So, you know, we don't even got to focus really so much on this dude, you know, polite in a sentence and all that. Like, he is a great example. This is a great example here in Israel. And with so-called, you know, same with GMS, you know, it's a great example with GMS. You know, because we were the ones mainly condemning this dude. And he was the one that was mainly trying to, you know, come against GMS and the apostles and, you know, uh, specifically the doctrine, you know, of Yahweh Shema Shai, he was trying to come against that. So it's a great, you know, win to that. Uh, but this kind of encompasses all those, you know, that want to live in this powerful spirit and don't want to take on the reproof of the Lord, you know, and the rebuke of the Lord, which comes through the prophets of the men of Israel, right? Through the prophets that rebuke comes, through the prophets that reproof, reproof comes, you know, you don't want to hear to it. You don't want to listen to it. You want to mock at it. You want to scoff at it. You want to make jokes. You want to jest at the Lord. You want to jest at the prophets. 
where there's going to be a judgment that comes to you, especially when the prophets decide to curse you to hell out, all right, and and wish a a, a really a, a, a swift um, it's like I can't think of the word, but a swift, quick judgment to befall you, all right. Um, that's what's going to happen to you. So don't, don't think it's a strange thing, you know. Think think to count it as a uh, as a wake up call. This should be a wake up call to you. But you know, ultimately, you know, Israel fucking hard hearted and stiff neck. And, you know, they're just going to, you know, they're going to pass it by like, you know, it's just some mere coincidence. But this is this is a great thing. You know, we we praising Yahweh Shem HaShai for showing his judgment, man. Here at Great Millstone and, he, and the brothers that are in the know, they know what it is. They know that he's getting the judgment in which he deserves for the fucking madness and the mockery that he he, he committed. Um, it says, uh, verse 26. I will also laugh at your calamity. This is a calamity that's coming upon this man. I will mock when your fear comes. Right, so he's mock, like he this this man should be afraid. He's about to get locked up for a good bit bit of time. All right, he had to take first off. He had to take a plea deal to not get locked up for more time for sixty plus years. All right, he had to get take a plea deal. So obviously there's a fear in him because if he wasn't afraid, he would just took the fucking he wouldn't have took no damn plea deal. But he took the plea deal, right? And now he's in there for a good bit of time. And now he should be afraid that, you know, someone will get him in the fucking jail cell. Because they don't play that shit, you know, in jail, right? They don't play, you know, you know that, that type of, uh, uh, um, you know, what he did, right? Like, they don't take that kindly, right? They're going to be people, you know, that, it's a different click for the, uh, the, the evil that he committed, right? For what he did, you know, there's, there's you know, there's not any click that you, that you can just, you know, uh, join on to in in the in the prison cell, right? So there's a good possibility that he might, you know, receive a harsh judgment in prison itself, in in including death, right? And the Lord is gonna mock when it comes, man. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna be thinking in your mind when you're getting fucking shanked in the jail cell, little willing, you know, that judgment before you, you over there getting shanked in the jail cell. You're gonna think, you're gonna fear the, you're gonna, you're gonna think of the Lord, man, and. It, the Lord ain't going to answer, all right? The Lord ain't going to answer. He's going to mock you. And it's a beautiful thing. It's like It's a beautiful, beautiful thing that brought it um, out, you know, last week at camp um, that, there, you know, as a testimony of myself, like, there are certain things that happened to me or to the um, the head brother, the buck, you know, at the, work, at the job place where certain dudes kind of came up to us and they just did us wrong. I'm telling you, they did this dirty. And we either I sent a curse on him, or you know, uh, the head brother, the box said, "Hey, listen, send curses on this dude." And I'm telling you, a, a swift judgment happens to them people within less than a year. You know, within months. All right, some some people within weeks, a swift judgment happens to these people, up into including death. I'm talking death. Happened within weeks of these people that we 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 set up curses because they, they the way they offended us, all right. And that's not you know I'm not taking I'm not boasting myself in that. That's the Lord doing that. We understand that that's the Most High doing so that, that. That puts fear in my spirit and a fire into my ass. That means you know I got to do what I got to do. You know I, mean? I got to put put my you know hand to the plow and not look back because you know we understand that the you know the Most High is known for the judgment judgment in which He executed, right? So really, you got to take this as a wake-up call. You got to look at what he did, all right? All that shit he was talking, all that, all that, basically, you know, he was, um, uh, he was calling us out for shit that he was doing him damn self. So really, you got you to take that all in and then, and then look it. It was all brought to the light, all right? How about you, I brought it to the light and exposed him for the damn demon that he is, the damn... All right, the the woman that was on the um the the the, uh, the victim's mother, right, and and the victim, you know, she she'd be called the victim. She had said uh during the um during the, uh the court case that she called him, I believe she called him a, a monster and a demon. All right, and that, that's exactly what that dude is, a damn fucking demon. Anyways, Salakia so for that rant. The Lord is gonna laugh. All right. Verse 27, when your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. So, 
you know, we don't got to focus too much on him in this precept because it, it encompasses all those that don't want to adhere to the Lord, that want to mock and want to talk shit. The Lord is going to laugh, and ultimately the prophets are going to have that last laugh. It talks about, um, he that laughed now shall mourn and weep, okay? So uh, we're, we're, we're taking that humble approach, and we're seeing this as judgment from the Lord, and this is just allowing us to get right, allowing us to make sure that we have our um, life in order, okay? Because no one is um, exempt from the Lord's judgment. Okay, we can't pay the Lord off. Okay, there's nothing that we can really even do because there's there's something there's things we can do that the Lord might not forgive us for. You know, so we got to make sure we're doing everything we can to please the Lord. All right, we ain't about pleasing man, about pleasing ourselves, about pleasing the Lord, and that's what we we are set out here, great Muslim, to do to please Yahweh by Shema Shai. That we in a, in doing so receive forgiveness of sins and ultimately receive salvation. And you want to mock? You can mock us for that. You know, fuck, fuck you. You want to? You want to mock us for that? You want to make? You make jest of us? The Lord has got a swift judgment for you. Okay, the Lord is known for the judgment which He executed, and the Lord is known for uh, killing and making it alive. All right, like Deuteronomy uh, the thirty-second chapter says. Get that real quick. Now, I don't want to make this lesson too long. I'm gonna hit these precepts fairly quick because I said a lot. Um, this is uh, Deuteronomy thirty-two. And 39, it says, uh, See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So whatever the Lord's judgment he sets forth, there's no one that can pull it out or deliver out of the Lord's hand. He 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 orchestrates that judgment. Point blank period. There ain't nothing else to say about it. Don't, or, don't. Um, attributed to anybody else but Yahweh Hashem Shai, all right? The Most High and His Son and the angels are ultimately the Most High, Yahweh, is that supreme um, power that orchestrates it all, all right? And it orchestrates it through other powers like Yahweh Shai and the angels, okay? And through Satan, all right? The Most High orchestrates things through Satan. It, it, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's the way the hierarchy works, all right? Um, real quick, actually, you know, I I brought this out. Uh, so like I uh, lost my train of thought. This is uh, Psalm nine. Since I brought it out earlier, so like it. Psalms nine and sixteen. Uh, reading through real quick, it says Yahweh is known by the judgment. Which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forgot the Most High, for the needy shall not, uh, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. So, I'll right, keep, I'll keep reading a little bit. Arise, O power! Let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear of Yahweh. Let the nations may let the nations may know themselves to be put to be but men. So you know this kind of throws it all into perspective. You know, starting with his dude, you know, polite, but ultimately the other nations and and, and, and Israel and like all that, like the other nations are going to be put in that subjection. You have a lot of you know these these other nations, these heathen, bucking up against this truth, bucking up against this word. You know, believing in that image, Chesar Borgia, believing that they that they that they are the real gods, that they are the real power, you know, what they set up as a belief system is the true belief, and are are, are using that belief to um I guess you could say, you know, put the entire world under subjection to them, right? Especially Israel, right? Especially the the, the, the nation of Israel. Esau mainly has used his religion, he used his Christianity, his plantation Christianity, to put the nation of Israel in subjection under him. Okay? So, the Lord is going to make it known, and we want the nation to understand, uh, hopefully this uh, Bluetooth don't kick out on me, um, but 
we want the Yahweh to put the fear in them that the ma- that the nations may know themselves to be to be but men, just just mainly men, because he, a lot of these men are walking around thinking they're gods, thinking they're, they're above the Most High, but the Most High has supreme ruler and supreme judgment over all men. Okay, especially these other nations. The other nations are going to shit, all right, on, on one, the nation of Israel, on specifically the elect nation of Israel, if these, if that, if their men are pushing his word and, and, and orchestrate or, 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 or following Yahweh Shema Shai, like you don't have shit over these men. So the Lord, it's a beautiful thing for the Lord to put these nations under subjection and, and show that they're, they're mere men. They ain't nothing but men. Okay, drops of the vessel of a bucket that you know drop or uh, a drop of a bucket that you know that falleth you know on on the ground ain't nothing. Okay. Um. Salaki, what was that? Verse sixteen. Yeah. So so the Lord is known by the judgment which He executes. That that's kind of what I wanted to you know to focus on. Uh, the Most High is known by the judgment which He executes. You gotta, you gotta understand the the Most High's judgment is fierce, okay? It's fierce, and it comes through, it comes through the mouth of the prophets, right? The mouth of the prophets can curse a man out or curse even children out, and judgment can be executed via Yahweh Shema Shai, okay? I'm gonna get that precept. This is a, this is a beautiful. Oh my God, this is a bad precept, man. I don't care what you, you know, wacky tacky Christians gotta say. What y'all got to say, you know, about, you know, how we teach the Bible and all that. You got to look at the scriptures and look at, you know, history and look at what the prophets of old did. And just 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 look at it all. Look at it all for for what it's really worth and not just solely rely on John 3, 16. All right. You got to look at this precept right here. Uh, second Kings, the second chapter and uh, getting right to the point. Uh, you could you could read the, the, the you know, what kind of goes into this but i'm going right to the point this is uh second kings 2 and uh verse 23 it's talking about elisha uh and he elisha went up from thence unto bethel uh, bethel and as he was going up by the way there came forth little children now focus on who it was that that elisha cursed all right it was little children There came forth little children out of the way and mocked him and said unto him, Go up thou bald head, go up thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of Yahweh. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel and from thence he returned to Samaria. So, Elisha who was being mocked by mere children, you could say even innocent children, called him a bald head. And Elisha looked back and cursed them in the name of Yahweh Shema Shai. Because, like I said, it, it's not about, you know, us. It's about the Most High. The Most High is, I'm telling you, the Most High is in our corner. And he is, he is given, he is, um, do that praise that in which which we give him. He, he's he's do that praise, right? We we have to give him that praise, all right? That honor, that glory. This is a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing that this man, polite, talked all that shit, bucked up against stuff, you know, and all, all these guys and other uh, and you know, because the other congregations, you know, kind of backed him up too, because 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 the the charge that he brought up against us, and. Look at him now, all right? All them people that backed him up and thought that he was somebody. Now, I want y'all to, you know, humbly, all right, apologize. But you aren't going to do that. You aren't going to do that because you're going to take the, the high road, take the proud approach, which is whatever. You're going to seek your, you're going you're gonna to get your judgment for it. But, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, it's all about the Lord's judgment and nothing we did. We didn't do anything. We didn't, we didn't seek to... To go after this man. We cursed him out in the name of the Lord. And the Lord took care of him. And the Lord is great. Is beautiful in that. You know. It's absolutely beautiful. And we know the Lord's laughing. Just like we're. You know. We're. we're, we're you know. Rejoicing in this. Okay. 
And, and it's gonna be it's gonna happen more and more to y'all up until the that ex, extreme judgment, man. And and when you when you really see the men, you know, Lil Will and I be part of that, but when you see the men, the elect men being beamed up in them chariots and you and you you know steadfast gazing while you you know catching a missile or catching the fire from the from the Lord, you know, like you're just gonna be sitting there looking stupid, you know? Standing there gazing like, man, what the what the fuck damn. You know, like the scriptures uh wisdom of Saul in the fifth fifth chapter says, uh starting from the verse first verse first verse on down, you know, how you kinda like, you know, didn't didn't think that they were gonna be didn't seem that they were gonna be anybody, you know? So Oh, so I got it. Um, lost my place here, but uh, but oh yeah, so like I, I got it back to water. Um, so this is a pretty harsh judgment that Alicia cursed on these children. Okay, so in like manner, the way we you know send out curses on these that you know because you know every every Passover we specifically send curses on those that buck up against the Most High. And his word and the scriptures and apostles and the, the men that the most high set up. We, we send curses specifically on those men that want to talk shit um, and, 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 you know, try to uh, buck up against the doctrine of Yahweh Shema Shah. We set up curses on them people directly, specifically. So it, it's a beautiful thing that, you know, it's being played out, you know. It's absolutely, it, we're 100% laughing. That, that comment is 100% right. We are laughing, but most most importantly, the Most High is laughing. This is the Most High's judgment. So this is this is exactly what the Most High wants to happen. All right, and to the to the to the T. All right, you shouldn't offend uh, the Most High's little ones. In the Book of Matthew, eighteen and six says that right. It says Matthew's eighteen, uh, Matthew eighteen and six. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for them that had have that had a socket. It'd be better for them that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. And there's listen, there ain't nothing to it. There ain't nothing more to it. Okay? You offended the little ones, alright, that believed in the Most High, that believed in Yahweh Shai, that believed in his word, and Look at the judgment that befell you, all right? It was better that, you know, you were just cast in the sea and immediately killed like that. Because it, the, the judgment, the judgment don't stop at you getting sentenced to, you know, I forget, I don't know, it was like nine years or seven, whatever it was, because you took a plea deal, because it should have been way more than that. You were afraid of that, that harsh, that long judgment, so you try to take a, a, a quick deal, all right? So, it, it, it the, the judgment don't stop there, all right? It don't stop there. So, you, you you offended the little ones, and now you now you gotta pay the price for it, man. And this this should be a wake up call, you know, for all them that want to talk shit. And you know, realistically, you know, Esau and the heathen, they're gonna get away with a little bit more, you know. They're they're really gonna get away with more, more because their judgment, their judgment that they have to play out is is much greater, right? Realistically, the nation of Israel, man, like, I don't know, man. You, y'all y'all gonna you know, build up sin upon sin. You know, until the Lord really fucking fuck you all up. All right. That's why two thirds got the two thirds got to go. Like there, there is a two thirds for a reason. You know. Um, but I, I can't. I really can't. You know, say too much on the way and on how the Lord orchestrates His judgment. Right. Some people get it right away. You know, you call you call a curse upon somebody. It happens right away. Other people, you call a curse upon them, and there might be, you know, a specific judgment that the Lord has set for that for that man. You know, so. You know, I really can't say, you know, who did, who uh, should get uh, a quicker judgment or speedier judgment. Because ultimately, all those that, you know, did us dirty or did us wrong is going to receive a judgment. All right. And that, that's why I brought up this, you know, kings. Right. And uh, Alicia's point. Right. Alicia had sent up that curse for some for simply being called a bald head by, you know, some, you know, wicked ass children. Um. But I'm telling you that, that if you don't repent for your sins and you don't um, seek after the Most High, 
there's going to be a judgment to befall you, all right? I'm, hold on one second. I'm going to try to make sure this uh, Bluetooth don't disconnect on me. Give me one second. So, luck. And hopefully, hopefully we are uh, we still good here. Um, I'll have to go back and post to make sure she was still run. Uh, but I only got a couple more precepts here. Um, I do want to get uh, Psalms 119 in verse 20 and then Sirach 11 and 26. We'll probably end on Sirach Ecclesiastes uh, 26. Um, this is Psalms. Yeah, let me get Psalms real quick. Psalms 119 and 20. Um, Because, you know, obviously what I want to say, I, I want to put, you know, I, I really want to put us behind it. You know, I'm not trying to boast myself on something I did. Like, like, th like, this ain't nothing that I did. This is the Lord. Like, you need to understand the Lord's judgment is fierce, man. Like, you got to un really understand that. All y'all playing around, this is not the time to play around. Okay? You do not want to be on the receiving end of the terrible judgment that the Lord is going to bring. All right? It's Psalms 119 and 20. Um, oh, sorry. Psalms 119 and 120. Got to go a couple more verses down. 120. Um, uh, I'll start at verse 19. 119. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of thee. And I am, I am afraid of thy judgments. So, ultimately, we, we like, just like, in the book of Psalms, which I believe this is uh, David um, speaking here, um, we fear the Lord's judgments, all right? I think, what was that, Nahum? Let me get that real quick. This is Nahum, the first chapter. Just just to kind of really orchestrate or, or uh, illustrate, um, you know, the Lord's judgment. Yeah. This this, yeah, this this is this all right. This might not be exactly what I was looking for, but this is good. This is good. This is Nahum one and two. The Most High is jealous, and Yahweh will revenge it. Yahweh will revenge it and is furious, and Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and reserveth wrath for his enemies. And that man polite became the Lord's enemy the moment he, you know, started mocking the Lord, mocking the prophets, and you know, doing all that madness that he was doing. All right. So he started doing all that wickedness, and he thought. That, you know, Satan was all together with himself. Like, he thought he, he was going to get away with it. He was going to live a, a happy life and get all this money. And the Most High brought that to a a quick halt. And now look at him, you know. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all quit the wicked, right? So the Lord ain't going to quit the wicked. He ain't going to let you, you know, get away with it, all right? You're going to be wicked You'll be wicked to a to a point that the Lord allows, and then He's gonna cut you off. All right. That's why uh, I believe Job in Job it says, you know, that He has given him bounds that He cannot pass. Okay. And that's specifically talking about Esau, like Esau being that main wicked, like he can only do so much wickedness, and it can only go but so far before it's cut off, right? And the Lord's gonna bring that ultimate judgment. Same thing with Israel. Israel can only do so much wickedness. And it's going to be then cut off, right? And, and, and you, Israel is going to be judged for it. But luckily, you know, there's grace in Israel. And there's that elect and that one third, the 144,000 and one third that's going to receive, you know, the word and, 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 and turn back to the Lord. Luckily, there is that, you know. But there is going to be a judgment to two third and it's going to be a harsh judgment, okay? And just as like there's gonna be a judgment to the other nations, all you all, just all of you, all y'all that didn't want to hear it, didn't want to listen to it, you know, mainly, mainly the nation of Israel, because the nation of Israel is the only ones that could really, you know, I guess you could say like have a better outcome. The other nations, I mean, you could, there's really nothing you could do. The best thing you could do is live your life out to the fullest, um, till the missiles come or till till your till your destruction. Really, that's what you got. You got to own. You got to own that you're in your position of authority right now, um, and take take it for what it is. Because 
you know, there's going to be the rules. Are gonna, the roles are going to be switched. OK. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that's it on that. You know, the Lord is slow to anger, great in power and will not at all quit the wicked. So the Lord, the Lord's judgment is fierce. All right. Um, I believe that's what is that? Um, uh, I think that's Corinthians. I don't know what off the tip of my I don't know the uh, exact scripture uh, off, the, off the tip of my head, but I do know it said, goes something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, every man shall receive the judgment, um, whether it be good or bad. There's actually two precepts um, that that kind of go into that. But you're going to receive the judgment, whatever you did, whether it be good or bad. So we, we're hoping that we receive. The judgment for the good in which we did. All right, we're gonna make sure we want to hope, or we hope, and we want to make sure that everything we do, we do it to please the Lord. That we're on the, you know, the good end of the stick. I guess you could say, um, that we receive a good judgment, which is that salvation, which is that you know that, that you know that 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 kingdom of heaven, um, and all the goods that come with it. Um, but if you are wicked and, and, and you're evil and you're doing all this, all this, you know, bullshit, right? The Lord is going to give you that, that same recompense, that same judgment for what you, you know, sowed on the earth. All right. You do like, like the scripture is saying, like the saying goes, you reap what you sow. And we're trying to sow that good seed. And then there's a, the rest of you that are trying to sow that wicked seed, all right? But you ain't gonna, there ain't gonna be no fruit, all right? There ain't gonna be no, uh, uh, good, there ain't gonna be nothing good trying to sow that wicked seed, okay? Um, so my last precept here, all right, just kind of bring it all home. This is the book, book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirach 11 and 26. Says, for it is an easy thing unto Yahweh in a day of death to reward a man according to his ways. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure, and in his end his deed shall be discovered. So, ultimately, like, it's easy for the Lord to give good to the godly, to give bad to the wicked. All right, to raise one up, to bring one down, to kill one, to 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 to, to make to make one born, right? To make one destitute and and and, and, and dire straits, just to bring him back up. It, it's easy. It's easy for the Lord to do that. So you should fear the Lord's judgment. You should understand that the Lord is not playing. So you know, get yourself you know face deep in these scriptures, and understand what the Lord is trying to bring. Okay, and humbly accept, you know, what the one, the men of the the, the prophets of, the, of Yahweh Shemashai, you know, humbly accept them and and bring them in or, or understand that they are the, the the men that the Lord set up, like because that's a you know pride thing, you know, a lot of men are you know don't want to learn it from another man, in, in, you know, know that how that whole aspect, you know, it's basically a pride thing, really. But um, understand that the Lord has men set up, all right? And the Lord, you know, is is really one way, you know? It, it, it ain't multiple different ways. It ain't, it ain't how you feel. It ain't what you think. It ain't what you are brought up in, you know, in, in, in Roman Catholicism, what you brought up in, uh, you know, Christianity. It's not what you learned in Islam. It's what the scriptures say, okay? The Lord is not plain, and, and, and this is... Uh, this is the truth, all right? The truth is in the scriptures, all right? That is the record that the Lord left for us to, to you know, to listen to, to listen to and adhere to. And, you know, not these, you know, fables that, you know, these other, you know, Christian churches and all that kind of bring, bring into play. Um, but that, you know, that's, that's just a little rant right there. Uh, hopefully the point was made. Hopefully this was edifying. Um you know, little willing, you, you you got what I was getting at. Uh, obviously, to recap it all, the Most High is the one who needs to be praised for all things, both judgment, both good and both good judgment and bad judgment. 
And, you know, Paul Light is just a great example of, you know, falling on the wrong side of the Lord's judgment. And, you know, really to us, he fell on the right side of the Lord's judgment. This is all, actually, let me take that back. He fell on the right side of the Lord's judgment, right where he needed to be, okay? But, you know, you should look at this as an example and make sure you don't fall on that same judgment, all right? So, you know, you brothers, keep pushing, keep pushing strong. Um, do do your due diligence and, and, you know, make your call and election sure. You know, remember, seek the Lord ten times more. And uh, till next time, I say shalom.